All right, this is such a useful chord. And here's what it is. It's the major three. Now, three is normally minor. Try making it major. It can... It, so when you do so, you know, you're just raising the third of a chord by a half step. That's how you make a minor a major. The normal three chord is minor. To make a major, just raise the three. Um, you end When you do that, you end up with a note that's not part of the key. But the flavor it brings in so many cases is just, just hits the spot. It's such a useful flavor in songwriting. Um, even if you just think about it in, in those terms and not in more complex relationships between chords, is it the five of this or the whatever of that, you know, you, you don't always need to have that going on in your mind. Um, and this is one great example where you can just think of the major three as an option among your, you know, you've got the, your go-to six chords in a key, the one, two, three, four, five, six. You can make them all seventh chords as well. Um, and then you've got the major three as well. Add that to the list. And so when you're looking for a, a chord to go to, try the major three. And sometimes it's going to be, it's going to hit the spot. Uh, as it does in, in many popular songs. Now, um, here are some ways, suggestions for using it that, uh, that sound great. This is not, you know, there's no limitation to this. You could come to the major three from anywhere. You could go to anywhere from it. But um, here are some kind of go-to suggestions to try out. So for approaching the major three, um, it works great to go straight from the one. If we're in the key of C. Whew. E, ma e major is my major three in the key of C, because E minor would be a three. Um, it also works great to go straight from the regular three, which is minor. E minor, E major. Mm. Um, then you get that little subtle building. It's like, okay, we're turning it up. Change it into a major. Exciting. Um, you can also um, try going down from the four. Um, that's kind of cool uh, because of what it is. I mean, it's you're shifting one major chord down. A half step each and each of those just going straight down a half step um, now let's go the other way where do you go from the major three here are three options um, go back go up to the four major three four and now it's a lot like going from the regular minor three it's, it's just a little bit different <laughs> slightly different flavor. Um, you can also go, as we've uh, discovered already, to the 6, which is minor. That just sounds great. And we've already talked about why, theoretically, because this is the 5 of the 6. If we treat the 6 as a 1, the major 3 is the 5 of it. So it's like a dominant. Um, so that's a great option. Those are the two most common uh, places to go from uh, from a major three up to the four or to the six. Um, one that's less common and that I really like is to use the major three to one as a cadence. Um, it can be a bit surprising. Uh, it, sometimes it feels like you're skipping a couple of chords or something, and yet you can totally make it work uh, in the right circumstances. So, um, yeah, it, there's a common note between them, which is E, the root of the three chord, is the third of the C chord, or the one chord. It's the same in any key. So you can emphasize that connection kind of tie them together but also the other two notes 
have uh, places to go in the new chord, in the, on the, in the one chord, which are just a half step away, but in opposite directions. So... Well, you've also got... And meanwhile, this one's staying the same. Anyway, I really like it. Um, and that's it. Now, what I just did there, um, I'll probably do more of going forward, which is, what did I just do there? Well, I basically thought of a chord not as a unit, but as a collection of moving parts, right, of independent notes. Now, they work together, right? Um, but they can move independently, and you can think, it makes sense to think of a chord as three notes. I mean, that's, we know that's what it's made of. And it, we know that, you know, it does constitute a chord, and it's very useful to just reduce it to that and think of it as an E chord or a D minor chord or whatever. Um, but the, the more you can hold in mind the three notes that constitute it, um, the easier it'll be to spot connections and to emphasize connections to tie together other other chords and in many cases chords that might be a little bit different um yeah just just possibilities musical possibilities open up the more you're aware of individual notes um and i don't mean just note names like i don't um I can play a random note on here. I don't know what note that's called, right? But I hear it, and I know that this is right below it, and this is right above it, you know? And, and so there are connections I can sense and, and get used to feeling without knowing exactly, you know, what name to call it or what key I'm in by name, right? So that's what I, you don't, it's not holding in mind a lot of information per se. It's a, a developing a sensitivity to sound um, and to individual sounds that make up a chord. Um, yeah. Yeah. So more on that in future videos.